Danny Kay from Rockaway, and I'm an alcoholic. My sober date is 1010 of 2017, and today is five years. I have my anniversary, my home group coming up on Saturday, and still haven't asked my speaker, so we'll see how that works out. But I am really grateful to be here tonight. Last year on my anniversary, I was sandbagged at the door of the Bell Harbor group in Rockaway Beach by my dad, who was chairing the meeting. And I had been to one meeting in the, in the previous year. I had gone to my third anniversary, and then I hadn't gone to a meeting. And then I went to his anniversary on August 19th. And then I went to my sober date meeting on October 10th. Did I say August 19th? I think I did. So I had taken a, a long break from AA and from, from meetings and from communicating with my sponsor and working a program pretty much at all and found myself extraordinarily isolated. And it was a mix of things. You know, there was the pandemic that was going on, but it was also, I didn't want to continue to be told what to do by my sponsor. And it was really difficult for me to figure out what to do with that. And so what I did was what I had learned to do, which was take my own will back, do the things that I wanted to do. And I found myself in some really difficult situations and I didn't pick up. And I'm really glad that when it became very apparent that my life wasn't going to get any better if I didn't get back into recovery. And so this past year, I think I had that realization in November that my life wasn't going to get any better. I had started on a fitness journey. I had started, you know, realizing that I needed to seek therapy. I had realized, you know, trying to improve relations with my, my family and things like that. But there were certain things that weren't getting any better. And I realized there was only such, there was only so much better I could get without getting back into the rooms and getting back into recovery and trying to connect with a higher power with a group, a, a non-denominational group of seekers. And that's kind of how I see these, these rooms now. You know, I kind of realized like, where else can I find a group of, I, I don't have the number of people in here, 76 people. Where, can, where else can I find a group of 76 people that are all trying to be better versions of themselves? And more than that, where can I find a group of 76 people that have all seen the darkness, the depths of the darkness that I've seen and like have had that motivation to be better versions of themselves. And I, I couldn't think of a place where I could find that. And that's why I, I came back in February and started, you know, making a meeting a day, not because I felt like I needed to, or because I should, but because I wanted to, because I, I felt like I was really hearing things again for the first time. Like when I would hear people's stories, it would make sense. And I'd feel like I was right there with them and everything felt important again. One of the things that I left off when I was, before I took time off was um, practicing the third step and the 11th step and really having a connection with a higher power. And I had spent a lot of time, most of the two and a half years that I was in the rooms before my third anniversary, I guess the three years before my third anniversary, we could say, that's a pretty easy marker. I didn't realize this until, until after I had come back, but I was really just stuck on the second step trying to figure out what my higher power was or trying to figure out what a higher power was if it wasn't going to be me. And whether I was trying to, you know, oh, the earth has power and the, the tides and the moon and, or, oh, it's science or it's fate or something. And I couldn't, I was trying to figure it out. And that took all my energy away from doing it. I don't know, how, like I didn't, I never sat and meditated and I didn't pray. I didn't, I didn't do the things that somebody who can, who connects with a higher power does. I was just thinking about what a higher power is. And that difference didn't click for me because I just went through the steps. I just was like, okay, cool. It's the rooms. And I moved on. It's my sponsor. He's a power greater than me. And I should just do the next step, which is helpful. It kept me sober. I'm not going to say it didn't. I got through the steps and I found a sponsee and I started, started doing service at a detox. I started, I became the GSR at my home group and I was doing coffee commitments and I was chairing several groups and during the week and I was staying very, very connected. I was staying very, very busy. And after a while, I think I, I was the chairperson for the Rockway Beach group on Friday and Monday through the beginning of the pandemic. So it was from January of 2020 through to almost August because there was a lot of obviously turmoil and I was trying to like be a steady element and I got really burnt out. My mom had had a heart attack that June and I had to travel to Florida. And honestly, it was a real blessing that I had that steadiness being in a stressful situation, things really changing over in my life and uh, having that, but it was also something that I had to do. And I, I it just, it was really taxing. And I think that was probably the breaking point for me was the burnout during COVID. That was a difficult situation was they call it in the 12 and 12, they call it two-step first step where you don't drink and the last step where you do service. And I hadn't realized that I was doing that, but I wasn't taking any inventory. I wasn't doing morning practices. I wasn't really focusing on six and seven. I kind of thought I was, but I wasn't. 
you know, I wasn't really like communicating with my sponsor about the things that I was feeling and things that I was doing. I wasn't communicating with anybody, whether or not it was a sponsor, having transparent and honest communication with other people who are trying to get better and using the 12 steps as a rubric to get become a better person is so essential. And I was not doing that and I was suffering for it. And eventually the gas tank that I was filling up with service, I used to hear that all the time. Like, oh, just fill the gas tank with service. Service is just like a gas station and eventually I'll need it. And I used to think that oh, yeah, eventually I'll need it. And eventually I needed it and I ran out of gas. So I was really, really happy to come back to the rooms in February. And I knew I needed to do something different. I want, if, I, if things were going to be different. And so I started practicing in the mornings, short meditation that I found on some app on YouTube and say the serenity prayer and the third step prayer. And my life has changed so much for the better. Just in being able to stay centered emotionally and, and grounded and has allowed me to do is to like see, not, not necessarily what the best thing to do is or anything like that, but see what I'm capable of. And sometimes it's not a lot, but sometimes it's like, see what I'm capable of and, and, and doing that thing. Being able to, to handle curveballs is something that being uh, a little bit centered has allowed me to do. It's so funny because because today uh, obviously is a big day for me. And it's just, I've been reflecting a lot on what it was like. I, I did the morose thing of looking at videos and photos of me from 2016, 2017, just to get a feel for what I was doing. And there's a lot of false friends. And it, it like got people in, in my videos that I don't have any idea who they were and we're having a great time. And then there's other videos of me like shotgunning beers by myself. Like, why would you shotgun a beer by yourself? Like, take your time. None of it makes sense. But it, I do remember the feelings. I remember the feelings of those months before I came in. And that's a lot of what I hold on to when, uh, when times get rough or when, you know, I wonder like, what's the, the deal? What? Like why am if I'm not feeling better, then why am I doing what I'm doing? And I remember what the comparison of what not feeling good now is compared to what not feeling good then was. And not feeling good then was waking up not knowing if I wanted to make the day happen. Like 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 dread at having to experience another day of having to deal with the repercussions of last night and not just last night, but last week and not just last week, but this whole fucking summer waking up knowing that my family doesn't want to talk to me and that my friends all are they could they could take or leave it. They, could, they don't really care if I'm there or not. The only person waiting to see me is the bartender because I owe them money, not having any idea where I want to go with my life, not having any idea what I want to do or, or what steps to get there. I'm not saying I've achieved my dreams in five years. I'm just saying that I have some idea what I might like to do in the future. And I could put together like some action steps and like try to get there. And like, I can do that with a clear idea of whether or not I'm capable of that. At that point, it was a miracle if I could make it through the day without hurting somebody. And oftentimes I didn't have any control of whether or not I was actually of whether I was going to do that or not, because people to me were expendable P to me were a, it was a transactional relationship, no matter what it was. And even if I was, if, if, even if I cared about somebody really like, like closely and greatly, it was a relationship based on what can you give me and in return for what I'm giving you. And a lot of the times, as soon as somebody didn't have anything to give me, it was, it, I didn't need them anymore. And that's probably the darkest, the darkest part of that situation of that part of my life, those last few months. Usually there's, there's someone where you can go to and have an altruistic relationship or have, have even, even keel or be on equal footing. At that point, it was the people that I was running with, my two friends that were interested in drinking and drugging as hard as I was. And once they stopped, stopped co-signing my bullshit, once they dropped me, that was when I really started to realize that, uh, that there was nobody there. There was nobody there. And so when, when the person that I was seeing told me it was time to clean up, I was like, all right, well, this is the last straw. I guess I'll give it a shot. And that was when that hand of AA was out there. I went to a cafe for a few days, trying to just get by on caffeine. And somebody brought me to my first meeting. It was like October 18th or something like that. And it just happened to be a business meeting. And they scooped me. They gave me a coffee commitment. They made, I made it my home group. I asked that guy to be my sponsor. and start doing what they suggested. Because at that point I raised my hand. I said, I'm Danny, I'm an alcoholic and I don't know what to do anymore. Or I'm tired of thinking I know what to do because the only thing I ever knew how to do was get messed up. The only thing I ever knew how to do and maybe play guitar. I could do like two things. And, 
But I would always get too messed up to play guitar anyway. So who really knew? But in that basement, people wanted me to be there. People wanted me to be well. People wanted me to get better. People wanted me. People believed in me more than I believed in myself. I met people there that that I could think about when I was walking past a bar and say, well, hold on, I got I to go see Mikey. And he's expecting me to make coffee. And how could I let him down? Like He believes in me. So if you guys are newer, just come back or this is your first meeting or you got 15 days, or 15 minutes. Find yourself a home group, find yourself some people to talk to, to relate to. That'll help you when, you know, the times get hard because they inevitably will. And, and then you can be there for other people when times get hard for them. Thank you guys so much. It's awesome to be here with everybody. And I'm really excited to hear everybody shares.